We're going to begin section 1.1 of our class in the book and talk about computers, computer networks, and the internet. First, we're going to just kind of look at what is the internet and get a basic idea of what this thing is that we use all the time and kind of take for granted. What's the internet? Well, this is how the authors of our book uh, present the answer to this. The internet, we could kind of, if we want to look at what are the ingredients on this recipe, um, we could see the nuts and bolts of the internet being four things. First, hosts. Hosts are the devices that are on the internet. These might be any kind of network connected device. Computers, smartphones, tablets, routers, um, all these things, uh, even the, the wireless access points, all these things are hosts. They're the end systems. Connecting the host are links. So all the links, the lines in this diagram represent a connection, typically you know, wired or wireless, that logically connects two hosts together. That's another important piece of the internet. Thirdly, routers. We can see routers as a type of host, but they're a special kind of um, a special kind of, of host that has a job of making paths for the data. So routers are going to exist in the core of the network and provide routing or kind of path selection for the data as it goes through a, a complex network. And the last piece, which is not hardware, but is much more software based, is protocols. So there are protocols, rules, uh, that are implemented by the host that allow all these pieces to interconnect and do so in a, in a, in a useful, efficient way. So these are four components of the internet from a nuts and bolts perspective. The authors of the book, Kuros and Ross, also explain the internet as uh, in terms of service that the internet provides a communication infrastructure. This enables distributed applications like the web or voice over IP or games, email, file sharing. Uh, secondly, the internet provides communication services. It provides things like reliable data delivery between point A and point B. It can reliably communicate between two, uh, two hosts. Yeah, it might also provide services, a different kind of service, called best effort data delivery. Best effort really means unreliable. We'll do our best, but it may not get there. Um, and actually, IP is a central protocol, the internet protocol. IP is a best effort data delivery protocol. That makes no guarantees. It's just going to do its best, and it may end up losing stuff. Um, TCP, another protocol you probably heard of, is a reliable data delivery protocol. TCP delivers data in order and reliably. The next question I'd like for us to consider is what is a protocol? The word protocol is a word we're going to use a lot in this class. What is a protocol? Well, it's not something that, um, it's something you're familiar with, really. We have protocols as humans. Uh, in my opinion, a protocol is really just some rules for interaction. And we have protocols between humans. For example, if, um, if I want to ask you the time, or I don't have the time and I'd like to, to get the time, what's the kind of the process of steps that we might in, uh, go through to get the time? Let's imagine, um, first I might look for someone who has a watch. Austin has a watch. Yeah? So I would approach him, get within a reasonable distance and say, excuse me. And he might say, yes. And I might say, would you mind giving me the time? And of course, he's the nice guy that he is. He'd say, oh, sure, it's, it's 148. And I would say, thank you. So that series of interactions is a protocol that we follow. If you break the protocol, if I were to just go up to Austin's personal space, grab his arm, and look at his watch, that would kind of, that would break the protocol. It would be socially unacceptable. Right? But when I follow the protocol, everybody's happy. Right? So, uh, we have lots of other stuff, like right, we have a protocol in this classroom for asking questions. It's kind of implicit. We've done it since elementary school. What's the protocol? First, someone, yeah, the student raises their hand. They wait to be seen and then recognized by the teacher, and then they would ask their question. The teacher would then give the response. So you see how that's a, it's a set of rules, a set of exchanging of messages 
um, often to accomplish some task. Networks do the same thing. More formally, a network says a network protocol defines the format of messages, the order of messages, and the actions taken by both parties when they send and receive messages. Um, here's a kind of visual picture of what we just talked about, getting the time from somebody. Those two people look very happy to be sharing the time with each other. Um, on the right side, we see another example of the way a TCP connection is created, where we would uh, basically start with a TCP connection request, get back a, a TCP connection response, and then we would start sending. We would request some data, perhaps, and then uh, get a file back. This is actually looks like a, um, an HTTP exchange. So we've talked about what the Internet is from a nuts and bolts view, from a service view. We talked about what protocols are. Uh, as we go through this course, we're going to talk a lot more about specific protocols that have been defined that help network operations uh, carry on uh, in, in a good way.